was big news. Police made an arrest in the murders of two men during an apparent robbery. These fellas don't have any connection to our, our shooter. It just seems to be that they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. My name is Ike. I've been in law enforcement, been a police officer. As a matter of fact, this is year 38. I joined in 1986. Uh, I started in correction, and after a couple of years, I decided to go on the street. So, you know, I went back to the academy, the police academy, and uh, graduated in 1988. I love what I was doing. You know, I love going to the calls. I love getting into car chases. Uh, so I, I enjoy just being on the street, being around the people, the community. So, you know, growing up, you know, I had a mother that that loved Christ, you know, but so we, we grew up in church. Uh, I accepted Christ early in my life, you know, baptized. And I called on him when I was in trouble. Uh, but when things were good, I didn't really think about it you know, Christ, you know, I knew he was there, I knew who he was, but we didn't, we didn't have a relationship. I was previously married. I had two kids by that union, and uh, after 14 years, I got divorced. The Lord blessed me to meet my current wife now, uh, Miss Gina. Uh, we have three kids together. I have a stepdaughter. And... So, I want you to tell me, about your firstborn, the boy that bears your name. My firstborn, Ike Jr., I tell you nothing but a joy. He was a comedian. Like, he didn't meet a stranger. Even in high school, like I had pictures, he always dressed up. He was like the class clown. Like, everybody loved him. Um, he played basketball. This is the ref that's gonna be calling the game. The right way. Hey, the right way. Y'all heard, ladies and gentlemen. So we know if it's wrong, he gonna hear me. Come on, I work with him. Work with him, boy. I love going to the games. He wasn't the biggest guy on the court, so he uh, he was always a thinker. You know, he was smart in his moves, smart the way he played, and so he didn't get that from me. All around, good guy. Loved family. Loved his friends. You know, I never got a call of him mistreating somebody's daughter, uh, never got a call of him being in any trouble or doing something he shouldn't have been done, and just a good, mannerable son. And that's one thing I, I loved about him through his entire life was how he was, and that was the, the big thing that meant the most to me. May 27, 4.30, 4.45, I'm, I'm up and I'm kind of slowly getting ready and my doorbell rings. And I'm like, who is this this time of morning? So when I opened the door, my sergeant was standing there and my lieutenant was there and my chief was there. And uh, as odd as that was, it never, nothing never dawned on me that something was wrong until I saw the chaplain. And I said, Chaplain Crosby, why are you here? You know, what's going, what's going on? And, and my sergeant spoke and he told me, you know, that my, my son had been killed. Police say it all happened here on Town Square Drive. Three friends were playing video games at the home of one of their girlfriends. Another man was there too, police say. He's now charged with two counts of murder. Police say it looks like the two men that were killed, 21-year-old Ike Brown Jr. and 21-year-old Jeffrey Hicks, didn't know their killer all that well. These fellas don't have any connection to our, our shooter. They don't have any connection to anybody except Gavin Berry, who they were visiting. And that's why I'm making that, that, that point, is that, you know, it just seems to be that they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Tokoya Kreiner was arrested and convicted of killing Brown and a friend and wounding another man. Prosecutors say Kreiner went to Barry's Southside home that night to smoke pot and drink beer. Jeffrey Hicks, Isaac Brown Jr., and Barry played video games. Kreiner sat back. They say he pulled out a gun and started shooting. Gavin yeah, Barry will tell you the next thing he knows is Pop, 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 pop. All successive gunfire in rapid succession. 
and you're kind of standing there like, did he just say my son was killed? He's 21 years old. I'm supposed to go, you know, not, not my, not my children, you know. You know, I always said that if you hurt one of my children, that I wanted to get you. I wanted, I wanted you to hurt like I was hurting. I wanted you to die. I convinced myself that's what God wanted. He wanted me to, he made me, you know, he gave me these feelings and emotions and I meant that. And all of a sudden, you know, my son is gone. And I walk in that courtroom and I see Takoya, the young man who, who killed my son and his best friend. And I'm telling you, for the moment I laid eyes on him, I loved it. I couldn't, and I can't explain it. Uh, never hated him. Uh, never had those feelings I thought I was gonna have. It, it never transpired. You know, when I looked at him, he, he looked like my boy, you know just bigger. I, I questioned God, but I questioned him about me. You know, I, I asked God what was wrong with me. You know, why didn't, why didn't I hate him? Why didn't I, why didn't I have all these feelings? You know, I'm a father, this is my son. I'm supposed to be angry at, at, at this boy for, for what has happened, you know? And, and I wanted to hug him. Forgiveness wasn't even an issue. Channel 4 cameras are rolling when emotions from inside the courtroom spill out into the hallway after a jury finds Takoya Kreiner guilty of first-degree murder. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree murder as charged in the indictment. Kreiner's family so stricken with emotion, they can hardly stand. Brown's father, who was a Jacksonville Sheriff's officer, was in the courtroom every day. I'm just glad the week is over, glad it's over, and I can find some peace. I realized that, that something was happening in, inside of me that I wasn't even aware of, you know. I know without a doubt, it was God. You know, he goes off to prison, and wherever he ended up, I would always be mindful of him. I would always be, you know, praying for him. A couple of years passed, and I'd write a letter, and I'd throw it away. You know, I'd write a letter, you know, throw it away. You know, I'm wondering, you know, hey, what, what do I say? You know, do he even want to hear from me? After I think about three years, you know, I, uh, I wrote him a letter, and I always let him know I was praying for him. Uh, always started off with, I hope things are as well as they can be. You know, I knew it was tough enough, you know, just being in there. And so at the end of the letter, I said, uh, I need a favor from you. I said, I, I miss my son, Ike Jr. You know, and I said, I'd like you to fill in for him till we all get to heaven. And I said, if, if not, you know, I understand. And so I, I hurry up and I mail the letter, you know, before I, before I check it out again, and, you know, and not knowing what to expect. And it probably took about three weeks to a month. I get a letter back and I'm actually riding the beat. And 
I got the letter and it's sitting on the, the seat of the police car and I'm scared to open it because <laughs> I don't know what it's going to say, you know. You know, I don't want to hear from you. Leave me alone, you know, curse me out. You know, I don't know what to think. And I, I pulled over on the corner of Kings Road and Myrtle Avenue and I opened that letter. And that letter said, Dear Mr. Brown, I now know that God is real. It said, I told God that if you meant what you said, if you forgave me, if you really loved me, I told God that I wanted to hear from you. And I told God that if I heard from you, I would give my life to him. <laughs> Boy, I started crying. But they were tears of joy, you know. And he wrote the most beautiful letter, you know. And at the end of the letter, he said, uh, Mr. Brown, you asked me for a favor. You asked me would I fill in for, for Ike Jr. And he said, no way am I qualified. But if you have me from this point on, you're my dad and I'm your son. <laughs> My name is Takoya Criner, and um, we are at Cross City Correctional Institution, Cross City, Florida. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. I never forget it. I was really desperate for 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 God to show me that He was still there with me, and that I wasn't alone. I was like I was looking for a sign everywhere, anywhere. And I remember when the officer brought that mail to me. I didn't have to get through the first sentence to know the tone of the letter and what this was. And it was it was God speaking through this beautiful man. It was it was God. And it broke me down right there. I had no if, ands, or buts about it or doubts that, you know, God was real. I knew his love was real. I knew his mercy was real. I knew his salvation was real. It changed everything in my life. Jesus walks with me. He's there with me every single day. I don't walk around with a burden of, of a life sentence of being incarcerated. I walk around with the energy and spirit that I'm free because I know I am. Grace is something that is given to those who don't deserve it. Mr. Proud, you know, what he offered me, the love he gave me, the opportunity that he gave me to be a part of his family, to be his family, you know, it's nothing short of grace. From that day to this one, you know, we were able to to communicate. You know, I was able to visit him, and and years later, we still, you know, we're still able to communicate and, and, and enjoy one another. Jesus is our advocate. You know, he can stand in the gap for me when I don't have when I don't have words. You know, Christ, he was he was all I had. You know, to depend on. You know, look what look what God did. You know, he he in, in his own time, in his own way, he's there for you. You know. The Bible says, if they would have known what they were doing, they never would have crucified our Lord. I tell people, if Satan would have known what was gonna happen out of this tragedy. He never would have messed with those boys. Mm -hmm.